actually when my husband, General Shino, died, I was very young. And at that time, people recognized me as the widow of General Chenault. But as time moved on, I don't th think any individual can hold on to a name uh, just because you were married to so-and-so. So particularly in the United States, uh, there were so many uh, famous generals uh, and with, you know, their widows. And uh, when their husband left them, and they, uh, they will be forgotten. I myself, coming to Washington after General Chenault death, uh, I make a place for myself. First, I went to work uh, at Georgetown University. And then I have written a book, A Thousand Spring. Uh, that, and then I went on to a book tour uh, uh, that took me about two years to, to that. The, my, my first book in English, A Thousand Spring, uh, was published uh, in New York. And uh, it was on the New York Times bestseller list for many months. And uh, they published 22, 22 prints. And uh, uh, so I, uh, I had the opportunity to speak uh, in, in almost 50 states. And uh, gradually, uh, I used my experience and tried to get a job with the airlines. And I was very fortunate to be able to ask to serve at the Flying Tiger Airlines. Now, people thought Flying Tiger's airline had a lot to do with General Chenault. It had nothing to do with General Chenault. they just using that name. And, uh, was it started by former AVG guys? So it started by uh, a former AVG, but it had nothing to do, General Chenault had nothing to do with that airline. And uh, in, in, in this country, you have to show your own capability in order to, to accomplish uh, and to be recognized. So I was uh, asked to first to, uh, as a consultant to Pan Am, and then, of course, to Flying Tiger Airlines, then later on, uh, I was able to do a lot for Flying Tiger Airlines, particularly uh, develop their market in Asia. And so I was moved up, moved up to uh, Vice President International of Flying Tiger Airlines, and I served until the Flying, the Flying Tiger Airlines was sold to Federal Express a few years ago. And uh, I was the first uh, woman in this country being appointed as a uh, vice president of a major airlines. And of course, you know, the aviation industry uh, very much, shall we say, man-oriented. And uh, so I was uh, very proud to be able to, to serve a flying target airlines. I got into politics in the early stage uh, way back when uh, Nixon ran for president uh, in 1960 against President Kennedy. And then got into politics. Uh, the uh, Republican and the Democrat, uh, both parties, were trying to get the minorities to join them. And uh, at that time, I was still working at Georgetown University in charge of a small division called the Machine Translation Research. And I was the chief of that little division. But that division only had one parking space. And my parking space was given to a white male. And he was my assistant. So I said to the people, both parties came to court me. And I said, whoever got my parking space back, I will join the party. And the Republican uh, person uh, who have seen died. Uh, said, okay, I'm going to do my best. He went to talk to the, the, the person in charge of the parking space and got my parking space back. And I, right away, <laughs> he said, now you're going to join the Republican Party. So it was by accident. But uh, I, I began to learn about politics. If you live in Washington, you have to get involved. And uh, to get involved, you have to do your part. And to do your part is get into the mainstream. 
and not to stay with the you know small circles among the Chinese small circle. As you know, the Chinese uh, always want to be the chief, and uh, so there's so many organizations. I realize there's so many different organizations, Chinese organizations, and I thought to myself, if I am going to be living in the United States and being an American citizen, I should get involved with American politics, American uh, uh, involvement, but not with the Chinese. Uh, so uh, I uh, joined the Republican Party, and right away, Nixon campaign was moving on. And so I uh, uh, joined the campaign and uh, learned a great deal uh, of uh, uh, the US politics, and Kennedy was uh, elected and became president. And then at that time in 1961, 62, 63, the loss of Chinese refugees coming out from mainland China. So uh, uh, we organized the so-called Chinese refugees relief. And uh, President Kennedy uh, had a uh, ceremony at the Rose Garden at the White House and personally uh, appointed me as the president of Chinese Refugees Relief. And uh, although he recognized I am not a, <laughs> I, I'm not a Democrat, I'm Republican, but that didn't make any difference. And uh, it, so that's my first taste of uh, politics involved the White House and so forth. From then on, of course, 1964, we have the Goldwater campaign which was a disaster. <laughs> in fact, it's, uh, it started in my little apartment. And, uh, but uh, Goldwater, probably, you know, it was too, too far right and uh, running against uh, uh, President Johnson. And of course, he lost. Uh, then 1968, uh, actually 1967, Nixon already uh, uh, asking me to join his campaign. And I became the uh, chairman, national chairman, women for Nixon, which was uh, a very important assignment. And uh, of course, Nixon won in 1968, and Nixon won in 1972. Uh, I was a delegate to the conventions of DC, Washington DC delegates, which uh, is a, it was not an easy, assignment because you had to have like so many signatures, people signing the signature supporting you and you'll be elected, it's not appointed. And then I became the secretary of the platform committee of the Republican convention, which also, uh, it was a very important job because uh, the platform committee talk about issues. Uh, we make policy and uh, we had to be at the convention two weeks ahead of time, and, and, and then we had many, many meetings and so forth. So uh, it uh, gave me the opportunity to experience about politics and also uh, to get to know many of the people making important decisions. And subsequently, I be have become friends with, uh, uh, with, with many uh, senators and congressmen, and today, uh, even now, uh, there are many friends in, in the Congress, uh, Republican and Democrat, uh, that I could go and talk to and share my experience with them, which I think is very gratifying. The other uh, thing I like to mention, which I don't think that the people, younger generation, realize, when when the uh, President Chiang Kai-shek died, uh, which also the same year, and uh, uh, the uh, President Ford sent a delegation for the funeral, and I was one of them, and uh, so uh, I asked uh, the White House. Who, who will be the, who will be the uh, leader of our delegations. And at that time, they assigned the 
the Secretary of Agriculture, which well, he was rather unknown. And uh, I thought it was uh, not quite proper. We should send someone with certain significance, with certain recognitions. So the White House asked me, who do you think we should send? I said, well, at least send the Vice President. At that time, Rocky, Rockefeller was Vice President. So the White House said, well, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to do that, you should go and talk to Rockefeller. And um, of course, uh, 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 Vice President Rockefeller was a very good friend. And I talked to him. And he just returned from Saudi Arabia uh, a week before, because the, 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 uh, the uh, king of uh, Saudi Arabia died. <laughs> and uh, he went there. And they already now the, the I think the the, uh, the Mormon they 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 bury the death within 24 hours. He arrived too late, and they already <laughs> the ceremony already is over. So he was already pretty upset. But then I I was able to convince him to to go to Taiwan for the funeral, and so we went uh, together, and uh, so I was able to do that. But I I don't think even Madame Chang Kai-shek realized that because I never really. You know, talk about it. But uh, uh, I think today, uh, if you uh, try to do things not for yourself and for the right cause and for the right, the uh, right things, you can do it. If you have friends, if you can convince people. So I feel that uh, that living in Washington had been a very interesting experience, and I. Uh, and continue to do what I can. I uh, feel very strongly that maybe uh, sometime still have a lot of discriminations. I mean, the Chinese or the Asians, American being single out. Uh, it's not to say that uh, uh, that uh, two uh, two wrong make the right, but. Uh, I'm sure there are other nationalities have done things uh, not quite correctly, but uh, because of their united front, they are so united, and they, uh, some of them, they have the, the, the favors of the press and so forth. Uh, they have been able to, to uh, get maybe a certain uh, recognitions or, or special treatment uh, by the press, whereas the Chinese Americans, even today, because they do not have so much political strength. And this is what the Chinese American really have to work hard on. The Chinese, uh, they are very smart, very dedicated, capable, intelligent people. They work very well single-handedly. They work very well as individual, but as a unit, as an organization, sometimes their strength are uh, being weakened by competition, by jealousy, and maybe because of the culture. And I think uh, they really have a long way to go. And, uh, uh, Many states, the Chinese running for positions, and uh, uh, subsequently, uh, because two or three first persons running for the same position, they would not allow themselves to recognize maybe one person uh, is better than the others. And I think that the other two or three should be gathering their strength and supporting one person instead of fighting among themselves. And that's why, uh, other than uh, Senator uh, Fong from Hawaii, uh, since uh, his uh, uh, retirement, we have not yet have another Chinese senator. And we have now one congressman and one uh, governor. But that's not enough. And uh, uh, in politics, unle unless you produce the vote, or you produce the, the, the funding, you have no voice. <laughs> well, 
uh, I uh, have to really uh, recognize the jealousy, and sometimes you have to be patient. Sometimes you do a lot of work, and yet you let other people take the credit. And those are the things you only learn from your own experience. And overcome uh, many obstacles is not easy. And uh, how did you take it when when people well, first started calling you the Dragon Lady? Did well, it hurt? You 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 feel that uh, uh, certain uh, 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 discrimination and particularly jealousy. But the jealousy uh, has been so strong that uh, they just didn't want a Chinese, particularly a woman, to be successful and to be more knowledgeable than they are, and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, if you uh, want to accomplish certain things, you just have to take it, and uh, not being bothered by it is uh, uh, easy to say than done. Uh, but what? this experience uh, uh, teach me that I uh, uh, able to I've been able to uh, overlook that. But I have to say that because. Uh, I have more friends than, than people not friendly to me uh, because I would maybe do a bit more uh, for other people and the people remember. And uh, uh, Chinese uh, probably uh, have a saying that don't, don't bring uh, coal to uh, uh, people uh, when they are warm already, but remember those people who need to be warmed. And I, I think that uh, I have always tried to uh, be uh, more kind to the people who have gone our power. Because they might be our power today, and tomorrow they might be back again. So it had many cases like that, and people always remember. And uh, so I've been able uh, to use the word survive <laughs> and uh, for so many uh, uh, administrations started with with, uh, uh, with uh, Kennedy and now the eighth president. Uh, uh, many people have come and gone, but uh, uh, I also been able to stay out of getting uh, appointments. And uh, when when the, uh, Reagan was was a president, or even Nixon was president, asked me whether I want to be ambassador to certain countries. I thought about it, and I considered it, and I thought that if I should accept one position, that uh, maybe four years later I'll be out of, of a, a position, then what will I do? And uh, I uh, uh, have to make a living. I, I'm a single mother. I uh, have to take care of two, two daughters. So I didn't think it was the right thing to do, and I thought that uh, uh, there's so much restrictions. The, the, the uh, uh, party had the so-called the plum book, and then all these appointments you can you know, point out which one you want and so forth. So I said I would like an appointment without, uh, with responsibility but with no payment. And uh, so uh, you could do what you want and have the freedom to still have your own job. And so I was uh, appointed as a, uh, the president's uh, export council and vice chair. Now the chairman uh, sort of didn't do much of anything. So the vice chair actually had the assignment and the responsibility to take US businessmen all over the world to, to promote trade. And I did that for eight years. Um, and then, of course, uh, later on, I was also appointed as uh, 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 White House uh, Scholar Commissions, uh, and I was the only Asian being appointed to that position. Uh, again, those positions, special uh, appointed by president uh, with certain responsibility, but there was uh, no, uh, no payment, but I was able to continue my own uh, professions. And other than that, because I 
always continue to learn. And uh, I, I, I realize that so many Chinese Americans have become U.S. citizens, but they never know anything about U.S. histories and so forth. I, I do a lot of reading and uh, talk to people, and I continue my writing, continue my speaking. And, and so each day, there's new thing to learn, new things to do. And I think you have to continue to improve yourself and try to do things for the others, and also get into the mainstream and do what you can. And this is the message I like to give to the Chinese Americans in this country. They must get into the mainstream and do more for the community. Uh, then you will be recognized. Then you will be uh, 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 rewarded, but uh, not just fighting for titles. I think Chinese Americans sometimes too conscious and too uh, impressed by titles uh, that uh, sometimes they have to do more for the others. And uh, mm -hmm. I think United States, this country, is, is such a country that's so concerned about the others uh, that uh, we always try to do things for the less fortunate. And that is a very important message. And I feel that I learned from my own experience and uh, uh, able to, to uh, live in Washington and enjoy my, my life and my experience with others. When President Reagan took office, uh, I was uh, his major uh, uh, campaigner for, for his uh, uh, presidency. And I was the first person, individual, he sent to Beijing. And I was invited by Deng Xiaoping to, to visit China in 1980. So ever since then, I've been back and forth and, uh, because uh, I myself very much concerned about the relationship between the two countries, United States and China. And then I have always been concerned between uh, Taiwan and China, and hopefully they will continue to talk and maybe the situation will get better. I was in Washington. Uh, in fact, uh, a governor, I, I won't mention the problems, he was in, in this country just visiting. And uh, I was in my office and uh, uh, we heard about the news and naturally we were saddened by what we heard and what we saw on TV. But at the same time, I thought that maybe I should go and see for myself. Um, in uh, July, uh, I was in the White House meeting with President Bush, and I told him I was going to, to China. And at that time, the Chinese uh, leadership, they were all in Beidaihe. And so in July, I went there, and I was able to meet uh, a few leaders in, in, in China. And, uh, uh, I uh, found out at least a bit more in detail what had happened. And of course, uh, I feel this way. I think the Chinese leadership eventually should come out to say it was a mistake. And the both sides probably made mistake. And uh, uh, if they wanted to put this to rest, I think they, they have to admit, I mean, what, no. what was your first reaction? What was the first thought? Very sad, very sad, very sad, and uh, very confused. And uh, I thought, oh my God, I hope there will not be another cultural revolution. And uh, so uh, I, I think at that time I shared the the, the sadness and uh, uh, and and the shock with all the others, mm -hmm. uh, particularly. Well, you didn't know all the detail. But uh, I think my most deep concern was I hope that was not another
cultural revolution <laughs> in creation. So therefore, I decided to go to, to China to, to, to find out. And now it's 10, 10 years. And uh, I, uh, this, this year, uh, mainland China celebrating 50, 50 years anniversary. Uh, I already got invitation to go to Beijing. I hope that uh, the leadership uh, recognize that nobody is perfect and no leader is sane and uh, come out and said, okay, we make certain mistake. The students uh, probably also make their mistake and uh, if they had compromise, maybe that would not have happened, uh, and put that to rest and move on. Because otherwise, these questions will always be, be asked. And even when Zhu Rongji was here uh, again in the White House, it was raised about these questions. But I think uh, both President Clinton and Zhu Rongji handled it uh, quite smoothly, but still, uh, you have read about many columns, and uh, they will continue to to uh, ask these questions. And I hope that before the celebration of the 50 years anniversary, they have something to say, not just to the world, but to the Chinese people themselves. Well, uh, the, uh, many of those young, young men uh, I met, and I, I told them that uh, they're, they're young, and when you're young, of course, you're very idealistic, and, uh, but they also probably inexperienced. And so I told them now that they're in the United States, they should probably spend their time to, to study, to improve themselves to learn about democracy. And, and, and uh, the, the, they only uh, uh, at that time recognized that they wanted democracy in China. It could not be created overnight. So I told them and, and encouraged them they should spend the time to study, to learn about democracy. If they really care about their, their country, someday they go back to China and do what they can to improve the, the condition. And I think that certainly there is a gap between the older generation and the younger generation. And uh, even the, the many of the young uh, men and women coming to the States, some of them, uh, they, they're quite pure. I think they, they sincere. And some of them, I think they were opportunists. I have to say that. And uh, uh, so right away you could tell the, the difference. There are a few good ones and there are a few that are not not so good, but uh, uh, to, to have this fight in front of the camera and the Congress was shameful. And the people say, oh, you see, <laughs> Chinese, they, they are fighting for the freedom, they, now they fight uh, against each other, uh, which gave people the wrong image. And uh, I wish them well, and I, I hope they, they, they will use the time to, to, to study, because in China, I mentioned education is so important. Now, how many young men and women have the opportunity to go to college? 4% in China, 4% only. And uh, so without better education, China talk about modernization, uh, socialism, and the new system, and so forth, all that need better educated people. And I have to say that the younger leaders today in China, whom I met, many of them, they are better educated, they are more open-minded. I think this is the future of China. And China should uh, encourage those young, capable, educated people to do their job. And uh, I know China today talk about corruption, they punish them, and then they execute them, and so forth. Yes, I think corruption should be uh, eliminated, but at the same time, there 
are people who are very dedicated because of dedication. They make the maybe their community or the society better, and maybe they make a few mistakes, but should not be punished so severely. And uh, I, I, I think that they should encourage people to do good and, uh, and uh, sometime uh, even allow them to make a few mistakes. They learn from their own mistakes. And uh, uh, I do think that the younger uh, people in government should have uh, a maybe louder voice and the older people maybe sometime give some allowance to listen to them. And that would be so much better for China.